Good morning. A special welcome to our uh, to all y'all and our guests. We are pleased that you are worshiping with us this morning, and we pray that the joy of Christ will fill you as you worship today. Uh, there are friendship pads at the center of each, or by the center aisle on each pew. If you'd fill those out, send them uh, down the row and back again. Uh, it's appreciated. And then uh, after church this morning, uh, we have a special treat. There's cinnamon rolls that are baking. Uh, so you're all invited downstairs for cinnamon rolls and coffee. Um, our confirmation students and their mentors will be there, so it's another opportunity to uh, spend time with them too. Well, today's KDIO radio broadcast is sponsored uh, by your gifts to the endowment fund, so thank you for that. Uh, we are uh, seeking to fill a, a youth and children program leader for our church here. Uh, please see your bulletin for details on that. Um, one way, uh, one of the ways to support with thankful hearts to our local community is by choosing an ornament on the Advent giving tree that will be up um, November 22nd. Well, the last few years have been filled with grief. Um, for really for all of us, for the changes that have happened. Well, to help cope with our grief, uh, there is a free holiday grief support group that's going to be held at the Ortonville Area Health Services November 17th, December 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th um, from 3 to 4. Uh, For more information on that, please contact the church office. And as a reminder, if you didn't notice on your way in today, the Advent Bazaar is open again today. Um, It is a fundraiser for the uh, First English Lutheran Church women and the projects that they support. Well, we are looking for volunteers to uh, help with the Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve services. Uh, Please contact the church office if you can help with that. Um, Our lecturer this morning is Marilyn Hansen. Thank you, Marilyn. And then we have some words from the Stewardship Committee this morning. Well, good morning. Um, It is Stuart Emphasis Sunday, so as you can see up on the screen, we have our Tree of Life emphasis. And um, just to introduce you to the stewardship board, I'm Becky Parker, I'm your treasurer. We have Darren Ehrenberg. We have a stand-in for John Anderson, Kim is here. He got stranded in Wyoming hunting. So he wasn't able to be with us. And Julie Schneider is out of town. So we're happy for the four of your stewardship board. So. Now it is. Can anybody hear me now? Do I have to say that all over again? We're we're okay. I think I was loud enough. Okay. Um, So, as you enter church today, you should have gotten your packet. If you didn't, they're all right up here and they will be back out on the table. But we want to bless them later, so I brought them all in. So don't worry, you can still get them and they will still get blessed. So... As you entered, you were given your 2023 stewardship packets. Enclosed are the materials we would like you to review regarding how you can help provide growth for our church. With the theme, Our Tree of Life, we are looking at our church like a tree. The leaves display the life of the church, all the things we do to be a church family and part of our community. Think about what things you participate in or what things you would like to add it to our church life. The sturdy branches of the tree are the parts that support all the flourishing leaves. Communication, service, fellowship, music, children and youth, community and pastoral care. And the river of life that flows through each of us begins with baptism, forgiveness, education, communion, confirmation, service, and proclamation. They all stem from our roots of history, reconciliation, tradition, holy scripture, and stewardship. Uh, As our theme of Revelations 22, verse 2 says, 
On either side of the river is a tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So please take your packets home and prayerfully fill out your financial pledge card. Put it in the envelope provided and return it to church by the end of the year. This pledge is between you and God, and no one here opens this envelope. It sits at the altar until it's returned to you next year. In addition, please fill out an opportunity sheet for each person in your household. If you need additional sheets, you can find them on the kiosk, or you can get them online. This helps the church know who is willing to be involved in service in our church. Be bold. And we would also like to highlight automatic giving. Uh, It's a way to help our church with a consistent income. You set up an online or an ACH giving through your bank to the church. And even if you don't attend, your offering will still arrive. So there will be a table set up in the fellowship hall where we'll be having coffee to help anyone who would like to figure out how that option might work for you in the next couple of weeks. We'll also be able to share with those of you who have IRAs and are required to make a minimum distribution how giving to the church from your IRA is an attractive tax planning option. Could everybody please stand and hold up your packet? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we know all that we have comes from you. Help us to be good stewards of those gifts as we embark on our annual stewardship journey. Be with us as we offer our financial as well as our talents of time, encouragement, and prayer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, stewardship. Is there anything else that we should bring up this morning? All right. Well, the peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Please share Christ's peace with those around you. Well, let's continue with the litany. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives gives us life, life, salvation, and and resurrection. resurrection. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Come to the Water of Life. Thirsty for mercy, all who are thirsty. 
Psalm 46 is found in the red ELW hymnal between the readings and the hymns. We will read responsively by half verse. A reading from Psalm, the 46th chapter, beginning with the first verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help us at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes way to cease all in the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still, then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The word of the Lord. The reading can be found on page 155 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles for Colossians 1, 11 through 20. An early Christian hymn praises the mystery of the political, personal, and mystical Christ, the one who is present at creation and is eternally reigning with God. A reading from Colossians, the first chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. We'll have you come up here and sit. Well, Michaela is helping us hand out some rings that Mr. Anderson cut for us, rings of trees. Pass those over there. Did everyone get one? All right. Well, notice on there how some of the rings are narrow 
And some are wider. See, like there's a wider one. There's one that's pretty narrow. See how it changes, how they are different? Well, when it's a rainy year, the rings get wider. And when it's a dry year, we don't have a lot of rain, the rings are narrower. So when the conditions are just right, the tree grows bigger and taller. Well, notice at the center, it's a little bit darker, right? The wood is darker there. Well, that's called the heartwood, the, begin, the middle of the tree. Um, the heartwood um, is an important part of the tree because it provides balance and stability and security for the tree. Well, like a tree that has this dark heartwood in the center of it, God is in the center of our lives. God gives us the security of being God's beloved. We are loved and chosen by God. And as God's love is spread, just like a tree grows outward, it gets bigger, right? The more rings it has on it. Yeah. Do you have a question? No? Okay, well, just like a tree grows outward and grows bigger and sends out its branches, and if it's a fruit tree, it bears fruit, right? Yeah. Well, we spread God's love through our love for our neighbors. And one of the things we learn in confirmation is that everyone is our neighbor. Well, sometimes that love looks like helping someone. And sometimes God's love looks like giving an offering. And sometimes it looks like sharing. Because we know that God loves us. Yeah. We can share God's love with others. So should we pray? Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for all you give me. Help me to share. Help me to share. Amen. Amen. All right, should we stand up and make the sign of the cross? And you can take your rings with you. All right, God in my head, God in my heart, God on my left, and God on my right. All right, thank you. And go back to your seats. You get to keep that if you want it. You can take it, yes. All right, our choir anthem this morning is Let All Creation Sing His Praise.
for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning is found in St. John, the seventh chapter, beginning with verse 37. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace, beloved, from the abundant giver of all good things. Amen. Well, there's a popular call and response phrase that's often heard at youth events. The leader begins with, God is good all the time, and the group replies, all the time, God is good. So God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Well, former director of the Center for Stewardship Leaders at Luther Seminary, uh, the Reverend Rick uh, Chick Lane writes that a foundation of God's abundance is remembering that God is good all the time. Well, through scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, God has showered goodness on the earth and the people God created. In order to trust God's abundance, we first have to recognize it. Well, God's abundance is most clearly seen in Jesus the Christ. Jesus, the Word made flesh, who lived and abided with us, the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth, who from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Well, Paul's letter to the Colossians in our reading today reminds us that in Jesus, the fullness of God dwelt in him, and through Jesus, we are reconciled to God through the blood of the cross. Well, the abundance we see in Jesus is the abundance of forgiveness, the abundance of hope, the abundance of of community. In Jesus, we come together in spite of our differences, in the hope that our differences don't divide us uh, from each other or from God. Well, we are joined in Christ through our baptism, when that gift of the Holy Spirit was generously poured upon us. Through the cross, God has opened the floodgates of heaven that drown us in God's abundant mercies. Well, through the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Jesus, we receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Well, God's abundance is seen in creation as God is the source of all that exists. We can rejoice in the fact that God is creator, and owner of it all. We have been charged with stewarding God's creation. It's an honor, a duty, and a joy. Well, God's abundant, loving generosity is because of who God is, not because we've earned it or we deserve it. Our place as God's created beings is to marvel at God's goodness, And be amazed that God would entrust us with so much. In thankfulness that God would choose to be in relationship with us, we manage well what God has entrusted to our care. Well, God's abundance is shown in our lives. The vast majority of us have more than enough to meet our daily needs, especially when you consider the lives of Um, most people on this planet. In the two trips I've made to Africa, both to Mozambique and to South Africa and the land of the Zulus, what stands shockingly out is our standard of living in the United States far surpass our African neighbors. And maybe even more surprising is how happy 
these poor people are in their very poor countries. While most of the people I met there had barely enough to daily feed themselves, yet they not only exhibited a remarkable trust that God provides, they shared a happiness in life that I envied. They gave joyfully, usually with singing and dancing when they brought their offerings uh, up to the altar. They uh, joyfully gave what little they had, whether it was food and a meal, uh, time to visit, or money to support their church and its mission. Well, by American standards and looking through a lens of scarcity, they had next to nothing. By their standards and looking through a lens of abundance, they had enough and they were content. Well, when we trust God's abundance in our lives, we are transformed. When we trust in God's abundance, we care for the earth. When we trust in God's abundance, we care for the possessions that God has entrusted to our care. When we trust in God's abundance, we realize that all we have is really God's, 100% of it. Our role as stewards of God's abundant generosity is to care for all that God has given us in a way that is consistent with God's wishes. While trusting in God's abundance creates a generous life, a stingy life is not consistent with a life that, that recognizes God's abundance. Well, one biblical standard for a generous life is the tithe, giving away 10% of what God has entrusted to you. Well, the tithe is proportional giving. A proportional giving recognizes that some of God's people have greater financial resources than others. And it also recognizes that through your stages of life, you will have greater financial resources at some times and lesser at others. Well, congregations that trust God's abundance are also transformed with a survival and scarcity mentality that can cut off generosity outward, like the narrow rings on the tree. Scott Cormode warns, the purpose of the church is not to stay open. The purpose of the church is to enable people to become more like Christ. Well, Chick Lane surmises that congregations that are concerned about survival make decisions that are based on staying open rather than being Christ-like. Ironically, this almost always dooms the congregation to extinction because it has ceased to be what God has called it to be. Congregations who do trust in God's abundant are free to be little Christ in the world, beginning right here in our community, because they trust God's provision in the present and in the future. Can we at First English trust that God's generosity spigot will not run dry? Can we trust that God is good all the time? Can we have a faith that God's loving abundance runs through us individually and as a church, a river of generosity bearing fruit today and in the future for the sake of the world? Well, generous congregations who trust in God's abundance find they not only survive, but thrive. They thrive because they outwardly reflect God's presence in the world. Well, I pray that FELC will continue to grow that light, be filled with the Spirit, shining God's love in Ortonville and beyond. May it be so. Amen.
please stand as we confess our faith in the words that are written? We believe in an innovative God who does not wait for us to find ourselves, but comes seeking the lost and calling us into a new way. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit, to become both in creed and deed the children of the living God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to respect and support one another through joys and tribulations, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated and we'll sing the refrain, There is a longing in our hearts. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Each prayer petition ends with, Lord, in your mercy and your responses, receive our prayer. We pray for your church, emboldened denominations and faith-based organizations, in creative and collaborative ministries, and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, Receive our prayer. We pray for the earth. Guide us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Install in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace. Support the work of international collaborations that seek the goals of health and joy for all people. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who are undermined or oppressed. Bring about your righteousness and fill us with your redeeming light. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for this assembly. Guide our pastor and council members in discernment and nurture new leaders with fresh ideas. Give this congregation a spirit of discipleship, generosity, and service. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the ill and those suffering mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We especially lift up Carol, Ken, Arlen, Gail, Harris, Brandy, Mick, Paul, Baby Rosie, Larry, Natalie, Baby McCoy, Zane, Mark, Brian, Janice, Jerry, and Terry. Our Fairway View friends, Ruth, Eleanor, and Aletta. And all our military who are deployed to areas of conflict. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all who have died in the faith. Console us who mourn and Comfort us with the beautiful promise of life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
this time we invite the ushers to uh, collect our offering and present it as we sing People of Hope. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. We'll sing Wade in the Water.
reading from the book of Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Water of life, water of birth, water of healing. Thanks be to God. We praise you, God, for the waters that gather and name us. We thank you, O God, for waters that wash and claim us. We honor your, we honor your baptism, a river of blessing bright as crystal. Bless the waters of this place, Big Stone Lake and the Minnesota and Whetstone Rivers. We praise you for Jesus, our Savior. By his cross, our tree of life, you are rooting us in mercy. By baptism into his death and life, you are calling us together, refreshing us for the work of your kingdom. Bless the saints who have gone before us, newborn servants of the crucified one. Bless the rivers of their stories, embodying the word for us, enlivening our faith, water of death and destruction. Renew us, water of hope reborn, stir us to act. Blessing, honor, and glory be to the Lamb, alive and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll sing Remembering the Promise. Almighty God, 
who gives us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. People of God, go in peace with Christ beside you. Okay, we will. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we sing, Send Us Out. Oh,